I know you find it hard to believe that I used to get in trouble for squirming. I couldn't sit still. Uh, I was always in trouble for not being able to sit still in church. My mother was always telling me, be still. My father would grab my shoulder and pinch real hard, you know, that daddy thing like, be still. Uh, and I learned to do so. I learned how you could be still on the outside, but not be still on the inside. It was my little ultimate rebellion. I would sit there real still, but my mind would be running. And I learned you could count the holes in the ceiling tiles <laughs> during the worship service. <laughs> I, I learned there were a lot of ways that you could attentively not pay attention. And we live in a world that is now celebrating that kind of frantic behavior, and we are coming apart at the seams. So, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about those habits that hold our lives together. Uh, and we're going to be talking about prayer. Now, I know you're telling me uh, your life is, is, is out of control. There's nothing you can do about it. Well, uh, let me guess. Uh, mountains are blowing up and falling into the sea. Nations are rising and falling uh, overnight. Uh, the, the sea is literally boiling with trouble. Is that your life? Yeah, that was described in Psalm 26. Psalm 46 that we'll focus on this morning. So stand with me in honor of God's Word as we hear this very familiar passage. Verse 10, stop your fighting. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth. Stop your fighting. Stop your, your haggling and your inner strife. Be still and know that I am God. This is God's word for God's people. Hear it, believe it, and live. Let's pray together. As you spoke to the storm over the sea, speak now to our own lives. Be still. Be quiet and relax, enjoy, be reborn in the presence of our Savior. For we pray this in your name. Amen. Five minutes. Have you got five minutes? So all I'm asking for is five minutes. Every day for this coming week, I want you to spend five minutes in prayer. I know some of you are going, well, that's not nearly enough time. I understand that. I spend more time than five minutes in my own prayer life. I got that. But if I tell you right now, I want you to pray for a half an hour, I want you to pray for an hour, most of you are going to go, I don't have that kind of time, and you'll never even try. So right now, the only goal is this week for you to try. Five minutes. Now, I know it'll go longer. You'll, you'll, get, you'll get focused. You'll get interested. Things will change. And wow, the time will fly by, and it will be longer than five minutes. But is there anybody here who doesn't have five minutes tomorrow? You can get back a couple of hours if you turn the television off. Okay? Republicans hate the Democrats. Democrats hate Republicans. Nothing's getting done. <laughs> Film at 11. Okay, I just saved you a whole week of news. <laughs> you got five minutes. Five minutes. I want you to find a place and a time. Same place, same time. We are creatures of habit. I used to be a night owl until Chris and Craig were born. Okay? Then we found out if you don't get up and welcome them into your world, they bring you into their world and you're toast. Your whole day's gone. So I've learned to be an early bird. I get up, I go to my chair, I sit down, I open up my scriptures, and I start praying. How do you get, you get same place, same time, every place. Same place, same time. Okay? We are creatures of habit. I want your body to know, oh, it must be prayer time, we're headed to the chair. Okay? I have a chair, I have a time, I have a place. How do you start? Well, when you sit down, don't think because you've sat down that you're there. It takes you a little while for your head to get there. How do I get my head there? I start by reading Scripture. Okay, I hope you read lots of books. 
I hope you read lots of spiritual books. I hope you read lots of theological books. I love to read, okay? But at no how, no time, no way does any book by any author replace Scripture in your life, okay? That means you're going to start reading Scripture. Now, the easiest way to do it, there are 31 chapters of Proverbs. Proverbs was a, a morality teaching uh, lesson, the, the uh, morality that they probably use for young men. And these are the sayings that they use. There's 31 chapters, match the date to the chapter. Today is October 1st. So today you would read the first chapter. See, you're already, you're already killing it, man. All right. Chapter 1 on October 1. Chapter 2, October 2. Psalm is the prayer book of the Bible. It was the prayer book of Jesus. Read Psalms. Read more than one. Most times they're short. Read them. The only thing you're trying to do is get your head and your mind all in the same place. Then I will go to the place where I am studying. And right now I'm in the letters of Paul. Right now in particular I'm in the second letter to the Thessalonians. So that's where I'll spend some time. And I'll read and I'll read till I go, hmm, that's interesting. Hmm, hadn't thought of that. Hmm, that's an interesting way of saying that. And then I will get out my journal. This is my journal. There is something about a pen and a piece of paper and clarity of thought. Okay, now some of you will want to keep your journal on computer. Don't. We, we've had computers long enough now to know that typing and reading, reading it on the screen is not the same. There's something about your hand and your head and your eye. The writing forces a clarity of thought and a freedom that we don't get anywhere else. Now, you can use any kind of notebook. You can use a legal pad. You can use a spiral notebook. You can use the old test notebooks that we used to have in school. You can use anything that you're comfortable writing on, okay? This is mine. No, you cannot see mine. Some of you are in it. And um, <clears throat> all right, this is where it gets real. All right, here's what I'm dealing with. Here's what I'm afraid of. Here's what's going on. Here's what's coming up. Here's some stuff. Oh, this is a good idea for a sermon. I need to come back to that later. Da, da, da. It's all right here. Okay? Because I need a place for my mind to go, and it helps me focus on my time of prayer. I'm going to spend some time praying for people that I love. Husbands, your marriage will change if you pray for your wife. Who better to talk to about your wife than the God who made her? Than to go and say, what were you thinking? I just, <laughs> I can't get her. And wives who pray for their husbands. Your marriage will change. Your parenting will change. When you pray for your children, and yes, there are some children who pray for their parents. Friends who pray for each other. And yes, take the time to pray for your enemies. It's what Jesus said, do. Now, why? Because when you start praying for your enemy, you're going to find out something. Jesus is praying for that enemy too. He's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. You do know he's praying for your enemy. And when the two of you start praying for that same person together, things change. Maybe it's you that changes. Maybe you understand what's going on in your friend's life or your enemy's life. And you can begin to build a relationship from that new understanding, that new insight that only Jesus Christ can give you. You will learn how to relax and trust Christ with the moments of your life. Most of us do not know the difference between the word anxious and eager. Well, I'm anxious for this week, meaning I'm looking for something bad to happen. That's what anxious, anxiety, anxious, that's what anxious means. Eager means I'm looking for something good to happen. Your anxieties will calm down in the reality of who Christ is. 
because this is the single most important thing that happens in that prayer time. I've told you before, glory has a couple of different meanings. One is light, the brilliance of God's glory. The other is weight, a mass. Uh, weight and mass have to do with gravity. In prayer, that's the moment where you put God and God alone in the center of your universe. For God is the only person strong enough with enough weight, enough mass, enough gravity to hold our lives in their orbit. Okay, the world will say, no, 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 this is more, most important, and it's most important right now, and you'll put it right in the middle of your life. And then things will spin out of control. Some of you are frantic right now, out of control right now, because you've put yourself in the center of your world, and you're not strong enough to hold it all together. You've put your career there. You have put your relation, other relationships there. You put something or somebody in the center of your life, and you're fraying at the seams. You're coming apart at the edges. Because God and God alone has the power, the gravity, the glory to hold your life in its proper order. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Know that he is God. Let's pray together.